Hi there, welcome back. This is video three of this series. In this video, we are specifically going to take a look at creating an FMOD event for this crane structure in the Unity level. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, go do that before you come back. If you have, again, welcome back and let's get to it. In order to create a multi sound for the crane structure, we first need a new event. So create new event, give it a name, let's say structure. So to create a multi-sound, right click on the empty track, go to add multi-sound, and this is your multi-sound container. So by now you're probably wondering what is a multi-sound and what is it used for? The most common use of a multi-sound container is to add variation to one single sound. For example, if you click on this, you can see you can drop sounds here. This is where you would add multiple audio files. And if I go to my audio bin over here, you can see I've got footstep single dirt. So if I have four of them, I can drag them all into the multi-sound, and each time this event plays, it's going to select a different footstep to play. This is a really beneficial thing to have, especially when you have sound events that play a lot and tend to get repetitive if you just use one audio file. If you look over here in the dock on your playlist, you'll notice that there is a button over here that's yellowed out, that means it's activated, and this hexagonal button is for randomized playlists. So it's selected now, that means Every time this event plays, it's going to choose a random audio file to play. If it's deselected like now, it's going to go in order. So we'll play the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one each time it was called. Let's keep things random for now. Now that you've understood the basics of what a multi-sound is and what it's used for, let's start by creating a Wood Creek multi-sound for this first layer of the structure. First, create the multi-sound container. And you can drag it the same way as you could drag a loop region. So this is good for now. And let's populate this multi-sound container. So open up your audio bin. And what we are looking for is the heavy pressure creak. So once you have your files selected, just drag them into your playlist like so. And now let's listen to how that sounds. We're just gonna lower the volume first and space the play. And if you press return or enter, the cursor goes back to zero. So as you can see, we're getting a lot more variety out of that one sound event. I'll just close this. And speaking of variety, here are a couple of ways you can add some variations to your sounds. If you notice over here, you have a volume and a pitch dial. And you might be thinking, oh, I'll just set the volume to a different level, I'll set the pitch to a different level, and that'll be fine, everything will sound different. Well, not necessarily. Remember that when you change any setting over here, you're actually affecting everything within this container. But if you remember from the last video, we can actually randomize these things. I'll just reset this quickly. And just like in the last video, to randomize a parameter, right click on it, go to add modulation, random. And we have a random pitch modulation knob over here and just give it a value. So let's have a listen to what that's gonna do to the sound. As you might have noticed, the pitch for all of these audio files is being randomized from this point to this point. We have a range of about 22.8 semitones. So now let's randomize the volume, but instead of doing it the long way, right clicking, selecting this, and then selecting another knob, let's actually use a shortcut. On your keyboard, if you hold down the Option button on Mac or the Alt button on Windows, and you drag a knob, you notice that that's actually created the random modulation for the volume, and it's allowing you to set a range. This is a handy shortcut that just saves you time and clicks. And one thing that you want to make sure is that the length of this region is the same or a little bit longer than the length of your longest audio file over here. The reason for that is if this was looped, You can hear there's just a lot of files and they're overlapping each other. This isn't what you would want. So the easiest way to fix this is create a new track by right clicking on the tracks over here, add audio track, and then open up your audio bin, command three or control three. Find those three files that you have in this multi sound and just look at the length of them. So see which one's the longest. So this first one's the longest. So drag this out over here place it at the beginning. And now you just want to zoom out so you can see everything. So close this and go to view. Zoom out is control plus brackets left. 
So do that. And now since this is the longest audio file in this multi-sound, you can use it as a template for how long you should drag your multi-sound container to. So delete this reference and adjust the length of your loop to just a bit past the end of the region. As now when we play it, you can hear we're only getting one file at a time, which is what we want in this case. So we've got the wood creaking, now let's add some metal squeaking. So same thing as last time, create a multi-sound, drag it over here, open up your audio bin, find the files, drag them into your multi-sound. And if you notice, these sounds are shorter, so we won't have to drag this out as much. This should be fine. And now let's add some variation to the volume and pitch. So remember, hold Option or Alt on your keyboard while you do this. Variation, more variation. Lower the volume a bit, and let's hear how it sounds. Okay, that's what we want. It's also good practice that when you have multiple audio tracks over here, just to name them so you know what they are. So, Wood Creek and Metal Squeak. So to recap, in the Unity level, we now have an event for this crane structure. We have a Wood Creek layer, we have a Metal Squeak layer, and they both have randomized volume and pitch parameters. But if you notice, they both start at the same time. So every time you press play, they're always going to start at the same time. Now let's randomize that. Go down over here in your dock to the trigger behavior, open this up, and if you notice over here delay and quantization, there's a time and a tempo. It's currently set to tempo, which is awesome if you want to work with music, but this definitely isn't music. Instead, set it to time, and now you can see we have a delay interval, and we can set this. So click, hold, and drag to whatever values you want. In this case, I'll do 300 milliseconds for this, and then I'll also do the same for the Wood Creek. Time, maybe 400. Now let's listen to what that did. As you can hear, we're getting even more variation. So last thing, just make sure this event is assigned to the master bank, build to the bank, and now it's time to go to Unity. Now that we're here, find the crane, Select it, select a part of it, the wheel, and let's look for the fmod script again. So fmod event emitter. And just like in the last video, you should know this, you're a pro by now. Play event on object start, whenever this level starts, whenever this object starts, and select the event. In this case, it's over here. And that's it. So by now, you should know how to create a layered event with an fmod, use multi-events, and set the pitch and volume parameters, and even add some delay offset. Stick around for the next video, where I'll talk about the footsteps in the music system, and I'll talk about how to use parameters and how to automate those parameters. Thanks for watching.